Walter Williams begins his day early, before most are out of bed. His enthusiasm for life is based on sound advice he received as a young man. Learn to come early and stay late, and always be ready when the opportunity train comes along. Walter E. Williams, claiming the E stands for excellence, was born in Philadelphia in 1936. He spent his early boyhood with his mother and his sister Catherine. My mother was very, very important. Uh, she was the one who made the sacrifices uh, to make sure that we got a reasonably good education given our income, given our circumstances. What we find is the basic economic principle, and that is if you tax something, you're going to get less of it. And if you subsidize it, you're going to get more of it. And what we've been doing is subsidizing slovenly behavior. Walter graduates from high school and registers for two night classes at Temple University. To pay the bill, he goes to work driving a taxi, and that changes his life. Through another driver, he meets an attractive young woman destined to become Mrs. Walter Williams. They would, you know, go to parties and he would be arrogant and they would come home and he would get a scolding and say, you know, you can't talk to people like that. That's what my mom would say. And you, can, you don't have to prove you're the smartest person in the room. People will know just by having conversation with you. It is 1958 and America is still drafting able-bodied men in the armed forces. And by the next summer, Walter too would be drafted into Uncle Sam's army. Being in the army is a million dollar experience that you wouldn't take a million dollars to do again. My first experience with open uh, discrimination and segregation was while I was on my way to reporting to Fort Stewart, Georgia. And I looked up and I saw a sign saying colored waiting room. And now there was, there was discrimination in Philadelphia, but uh, there weren't the open signs saying uh, colored waiting room, colored bathroom, colored water fountain. Yeah, I, was in, I was just in shock because I'd never seen that uh, being born and raised in Philadelphia. One obvious form of discrimination in the military was the assignment of menial jobs to blacks. Walter was sent to the motor pool to wash military vehicles. When he was ordered to paint a two and a half ton truck, he knew full well the officer meant only the flatbed. By the time he got to the tires, he was stopped. And so he said, soldier, what in the hell are you doing? I said, I'm painting a truck, sir. He said, you don't do it that way. I, I said, I, you said the whole truck. Yeah, I had uh, officers uh, that would question me and say, what's my agenda? And I was saying, all due respect to you, sir, I took an oath of office when I was drafted in the Army to uphold and defend the United States Constitution against its enemies, both foreign and domestic. And you, sir, are a domestic enemy of the Constitution. At one time, uh, black Americans were not allowed in professional basketball and, and football. Well, how did, how did black Americans go from not being in these sports uh, to being the top and dominating them? It, it wasn't due to any anti-discriminatory uh, laws or, or affirmative action at all. So you say, well, how do you explain it? I think that these guys can just do a 360 slam dunk in your face and you can't do anything about it. So much that Jackie Robinson was put through was uh, due to the fact that other people understood that once he broke the color line, it was all over. The welfare state has done to black Americans what slavery could not have done, Jim Crow and the harshest racism could not have done, namely to destroy the black family. And many people believe that the route to economic power is to have political power. And there's absolutely no evidence uh, to support that. Government cannot create a special privilege for one American without simultaneously creating a special disadvantage for some other American. Much of what Walter Williams has achieved in life has been the result of hard work and sacrifice. But luck and chance have also been on his side. What if he had never had a determined and disciplined mother? Or tough-minded teachers who, as he says, didn't give a damn about his self-esteem? Suppose he never got a job driving a taxi. It's likely he would never have met Connie. 
where would he be now? Where would any American of color be without freedom and opportunity?